there's this big question about how much time should I train per day? And it's, you know, it's such a hard question to answer because are you talking a three month old pup? Or are you talking a three year old established dog? Are you, uh, what are you looking to get out of the dog? There's a lot that goes into that. But for you, somebody drops off a dog. Let's say they've got a, you know, a six month old, eight month old lab, whatever. They're like, Josh, whip this dog into shape. Do what you do. What's the, when you like, when you look at that situation, I know you can't speak, you got to kind of speak in generalities here. And we know dogs are individuals, so it's, it's going to vary. But what are you like confident? You're like, okay, if I give this dog X amount of my time every day, I'm probably going to get their desired result. Could you answer that? Well, so, so I always look at things as quality over quantity because you could take a dog out and say, Hey, we're going to work a day every day for a half hour. But if that half hour is not on point, if it is not focused, and if you don't have a goal in mind, you're going to go up there and go through the motions and you're never going to make the progress you want to make. Um, Every training session, the way that I go in every training session is I'm reading the dog. I have a goal in mind. I have a plan. But that plan can be changed at the drop of a hat depending on what that dog is telling me. If I have a goal of, you know, we'll, we'll just use number sakes, right? So if like, if I have a goal of I'm going to achieve these two things during this training pro, or this training session, and this dog comes out and is focused and driven, nails those two things, and I think, hey, we can keep going with it. Let's keep going with it. That dog may come out, not be into it today, you know, be a little off, a little distracted, whatever it is, and say, hey, instead of two, let's let's just get one. Let's get this one. We're just going to kind of redirect, make this a positive thing, and move on. Um, you know, but but there's so much of the mental side that goes into this. And this is where I think too often people go into it thinking a dog is a dog, right? Like I have a hard time with books. I have a hard time with DVDs. I have a hard time with online content, right? Not because it's bad information, but because it's so difficult. Like there's no way for me to tell you, hey, this is where, what your dog should be doing at this age because every dog is so different. And it feels like a cop-out answer. It probably sounds like one. But, I mean, it is truly the truth is that it really depends on what what have you done with this dog up to this point? Where is this dog at? And then your you know, your level of what is adequate might be different than what my level is. I mean, it, there's so much that goes into it. That's where I think the struggle comes from. That's also like I try to stay away from anything online, whether it's you know social media, whether it's forums, chat rooms, whatever it is, because the thing with dogs is that there is no degree or piece of paper or class that says, I mean, there is to an extent, I guess, if you get into some of the stuff, but like for, especially for gun dog trainers, that this person is qualified to do this, this person is not. So one, everybody that owns a dog thinks that they, they are an expert to a point or you know, for the most part, and they have an opinion and they want to give it, right? But I just don't understand you know, some of these people's thoughts on stuff. So like um, e-collar comes up you know, a lot, right? And I've heard people say, well, I don't, I don't need an e-collar on my dog like they're bragging about it, right? So even if that is the case, which I think you can make the argument that it's not, but even even if it is the case, who are you to tell somebody else that may not have the time to put in that you did with your dog, that may not have the resources you had, that may not have, you know, I mean, there's so much that goes into this. Who are you to tell this person they shouldn't be doing that, right? Because if that is a tool that is going to enhance the relationship between uh, that person and their dog, and maybe more importantly, keep that potentially keep that dog safe, who are you to tell that person they shouldn't be using that, right? And that is just one example. I'm not trying to magnify an issue that you know we could go round and round and round on, but it's it's one of those things that everybody has an opinion and everybody wants to to throw it out there. Um, so it, yeah, the, it it's a difficult it's a difficult question to answer because it, you're not dealing with a a rock, right? That I'm going to move this rock from here to here. It should take me this long to do that. Um, yeah, it's it's it. There's mental there's breeding there's a lot that goes into it yeah well i think i i find myself you know when you when you bring up the point of you know taking in content and going okay well here's a here's an article on dog training or here's a video on dog training or or whatever i always i think about that because i create that stuff all the time and i go what what are the readers getting out of this what are the listeners getting out of this 
And what you find that resonates, I think the best right now, because there's so much information out there, is just get people to think about these things. So like when you when you bring up e-collars, like I love having people on who are on both sides of that issue because I want people to think about their dog and their training style and go, is this, do I need this? Do I not need this? Why? What do I want to get out of this? And I want people to just think about like, all right, if you if you have this goal to get a behavior out of a dog, I want the ideas that that people who know how to do this stuff, I want that out there. And then you take that in and go, this seems... This seems right for my situation, or maybe it is, it's not instead of, you know, cause w- when you bring up like the, the point A to B, this is how you train a dog thing. That's almost the worst stuff because it, it leads people to believe that's how they're going to train their dog. And maybe they have that dog and maybe they have that time, but probably they don't, or probably they, they can't do everything that's that's there the same way so it's it's not really applicable and i always think like when you take a guy like you you take a guy like doc and you take a guy like ronnie smith whoever and they tell you here's how you teach a dog to heal what they don't even realize is going on is there's so much unspoken communication between the dog and so many things recognized from so much experience that it would be impossible to sit there and put into 500 or a thousand words, the entirety of what you're doing to get that behavior out of a dog. It's just, it's just, you're too limited by the medium, I think. Yeah. So I think my biggest, biggest hurdle or biggest enemy with any dog's training situation is timeline because there's no way that every dog is going to go through things at a certain, you know, a certain pace. And what's hard is that, like I would love in the worst way to not have timelines. And I think I'm moving towards that, um, not have timelines in any of my training programs. Because for me to get the most out of the dog, I need to look at the dog as an individual. Now, you may benefit from that and the dog may be gone less time. And in a lot of cases, they are. But there's a severe disappointment that you can hear in people's voices. when are like, hey, I need an extra week or I need you know, an extra couple of weeks, whatever it is. That doesn't mean that the dog is any worse. That just means that the dog has communicated in a different way and may need a little different you know, way of understanding it, may need a few more reps to retain the information. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. So I had, uh, I, I really like to, um, as you know, uh, we breed British Labs. I spend a lot of time overseas um, back and forth. And oftentimes, usually once a year, this is different. <laughs> it's been a different year altogether, of course. But um, I normally try to bring one of my friends from overseas here um, one, cause it was great to spend time with them, but then two, they get to kind of see what we have going on. And I've really enjoyed uh, around the game fair time, uh, in Minnesota, having them come there because they see a lot, right? They see a lot of different people, how they interact with their dogs, you know, kind of see some dogs, you know, the games that they have you know, going on. It's really interesting for them to see that. Um, but I had a friend of mine a couple of years ago come and he, you know, he walked the whole, the whole show and he came back to the booth and I was like, so what do you think? And he's like, well, I don't understand why you guys put timelines on all these training programs. Like, look, and he had like everybody's brochure and it was eight weeks for this, 12 weeks for this. Four. He's like, how can you, how can you even know that? And I'm like, well, you can't, you know, and that's the real answer right now. Um, like what we talked about is, okay, so if you have a dog that's coming up to a deadline and you're not there or the dog's not there, as an owner, wouldn't you want the trainer to take a few extra weeks and do it the right way rather than try to hammer the dog through it just to get him to a certain point, right? I mean, we have the whole life of the dog ahead of us, not just, you know, that timeline. Um, and so I always, I think the timelines are about the absolute worst thing that we can put on ourselves as trainers, but then also like, you know, people at home, like the time, like do not think about the timelines. I mean, there, there is no timeline. So we just did, uh, we do a lot of Instagram stories on the Riverstone Kennels Instagram page and Facebook as well. Um, I love documenting hunts in particular because when you see the dog in action, um, it could be a dog's first hunt. It could be the first time they have a Canadian goose encounter. Um, could be the first, whatever, right? I mean, there's so much, even for a veteran dog, there is so much that goes on. Um, one of the videos that blew up for us last year was, Meg blind was probably like, uh, it wasn't even Meg, I guess for him, but you know, 250, 300 yards and the bird dove on him. And just the way he handled that, the bird would pop up and how he handled that was really interesting to watch. Um, 
but we just did one here for dove season in Kansas with a dog named Bracken. Bracken was on his first hunt. Bracken is three years old. And we had so many people message me and, and be like, why in the world is that his first hunt when he's three years old? I am a big believer in do not hunt the dog until he's ready. Because all that you're doing is you're going to create more issues for yourself if the dog isn't ready. Like we all think like, hey, we have this puppy. He's got to get in the, out in the field this year. He's got to get that exposure, right? Well, think of all the bad habits that he's also created too because he hasn't had that time, whether it's obedient, uh, obedience, whether it's you know, bird contacts, whether it's, I mean, there could be a number of things, but you will create problems if you're not ready. Bracken this year, he he was one of my best dogs as far as hunt test goes. He didn't fail a single hunt test all year. He was dialed in. He was matured. He understood the game. He was composed. Like He was ready this year. Last year, he was still immature in some areas, um, I was specifically breaking. Like I was a, I was a hair nervous. He was going to be a breaker if I put him into a situation too early. This year, had, yeah, he's never thought about it, but he was ready. And so, you know, going back to the timeline piece, like not only in training, but hunting as well, like just don't put timelines on yourself. And I think you're going to be so happier in the long run. Yeah, I think I think the counter argument that people would make to that, because Jeremy Moore just brought up a very similar uh, thought process is, you know, if you've got eight dogs like you do, you're not missing a hunting season. <laughs> you know, like mm-hmm. you, you're you going to yeah. go out with a badass dog and you're going to hunt. Somebody like me who has one dog at a time sits here and goes, man, three years is a long time to wait. And so I, you know, I just know, I, even though it's probably really solid advice, I know most people aren't going to listen to it because they're going to go, I got to get my, I'm not wasting, or, you know, I'm not giving up a third of this dog's prime hunting or, you know, whatever time period it would be. And so it's, that's a rough thing. But I think as far as looking at, you know, okay, well, two months to obedience trained or six weeks to gunfire introduction, bird introduction, water introduction, whatever. I, when you talk about that and you say that that's like the, the biggest constraint on you and you're moving away from that as a trainer, I hear a lot of off the record comments from trainers about that. Like it, that, that the dog training industry has done a disservice to itself by sort of adopting that as just maybe like a necessary sales approach. And like, maybe it had to be a part of it, but I, I feel like what you're saying is what a lot of dog trainers are thinking. And I think that the general public, the more they hear about that is going to go, you know what? I'd rather you just say, maybe it'll be two months, maybe it'll be four months, but my dog gets to where it needs to go. And you're the one, you know, like we don't go to the doctor. I mean, I guess we kind of do and be like, oh, I think I'm diagnosed with this. And the doctor goes, just like stay off Mm -hmm. Google, I'll figure it out. Like they're the professionals. We listen to them, you know, and I I think we're moving in that direction with dog training. I hope, I hope so anyway. Yeah. Well, I I think as we move that way, we're going to come out with better dogs and better relationships, you know, with our dogs. I really believe that you know, we're we're moving away from. I mean, I've been away from it for some time, and I, I I'm seeing a trend this way of the old school approach is going away. As far as the dog is a dog, you make him do it or else. And you know, quite frankly, you're seeing a lot of the older guys. You know, great friends of mine, which I won't you know name by name, but great friends of mine that are mentors of mine are retiring with the thought of, hey, you are understanding how to communicate with this new age of dog. I'm not because just not the way I grew up, right? So like I'm not being as effective. And so it's time for me to you retire, move on, which is, I mean, it's an interesting thing to talk about. Um, but before I forget about it, I want to go back one quick second because I love your rebuttal to, I can't wait you know, two, three years to hunt my dog. And, and I, I would never ask somebody to do that. But I do think for you to be fair to the dog, your mindset and your expectations have to change. This is no longer everything has been set up. Everything has been at your pace, right? There's going to be situations that come up that, I mean, it's just going to unravel, you know, some of the training. I mean, I watch with my dogs every year and every single person that hunts, whether you realize or not, you watch it too, where hunting season unravels training season. It's just the reality of it because you have, you have uncontrolled situations, you have uncontrolled birds, you have a lot of distraction, you know, for you as the handler. And there's a lot of things that you would not let slide in a training situation that in a hunting situation, it works, it gets done, it was a success, but there's some things there that you will see, whether it's in the spring, the summer, you know, that next week, I mean, you will see some repercussions of it. So you just have to go in with the right mindset. 